back. This is part six of my internalized misogyny series. I'm so excited. So many people love this series. And I also want to say this before I dive into this list. I've had so many women comment on these lists and say, well, I thought this stuff was common knowledge. This stuff is so basic. I'm so glad I don't struggle. Just the simple fact of you coming on these lists and try to talk down to other women who may not have known these things or who are still on a learning journey is internalized misogyny because society has convinced us that we need to compete against each other for who's the better woman. Repeat after me. We are all like other girls, okay? Anytime you feel like you need to put yourself on a pedestal and look down on other women, I want you to remember that, okay? We're all sisters here on this page. We're all learning. We can all do better. There is always room for improvement, okay? Let's dive in. Number one, you still believe in submission. I'm pretty sure I've gone through this one already, but I feel like I need to touch on it a few more times. Yes, I totally understand it. Wow, your husband is so amazing. He makes you feel safe to where you can just relax in your feminine energy and yield to his leadership. Blah, blah, blah. Internalized misogyny and you have been groomed by patriarchy. Men are not superior to us, okay? We are on an even playing field. Your relationship is supposed to be an equal partnership. It's supposed to be times when maybe he's better equipped to deal with the situation. So you let him deal with it. And there's going to be times when you are better equipped to deal with the situation. And there's going to be times when you both can go through it together and just collaborate. It's, it's a team effort. There should not be a relationship where I let my husband lead. No, you're not dumb. Your feedback matters. You're more than capable of making decisions, hard decisions, big decisions, small decisions. You are an equal partner in this relationship. And of course he's okay with submission because it benefits him. Ladies, let's, let's use these, okay? Why would anybody have a problem with something that benefits them? <laughs> If he was really such a great man, he would want you to be his equal partner. He would not want to be the head honcho, the leader. He would not want to beat his chest and be in charge of everything. There would be no, well, my man has the final say. No, he would want to listen to you and talk and discuss things together because maybe in a situation, the final say might belong to you. Number two, you believe that women just need to be humble. Um, I'm going to the Beyonce concert um, in, in two months and a couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, she's very, you know, active and acknowledging her audience members and everything. And everybody's like, oh, she's so humble. Women always have to be humble. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, everybody needs to show kindness and human decency to each other. But... We're not allowed to be confident. I mean, we can be confident, but not too confident. We're perfectly fine with you coming on the internet and telling everybody that you think you don't look too nice and that you don't like your body, right? We'll hype you up, but if you come on here thinking that you're the shit and you're posting because you think you look good, oh honey, you need to calm down. And men love confidence, but only when it's given to you by them. If they can make you feel that you look good, that's acceptable. But you can't look good and feel good on your own. That's unacceptable. People have cockiness and confidence mixed up. Confidence is saying, hey, I think I'm great and I think we're all great. Cockiness is saying, I'm the only one. I'm the only one that's great. I'm the only one that's the best. There's a total difference. And anytime a woman says, you know what? I feel amazing, I look amazing. People automatically err to the side of cockiness. I post wearing certain outfits because I think I fucking look good, okay? And I also think you fucking look good. And anybody in your life that's trying to humble you need not be in your life anymore. I don't, I don't need that energy, okay? We lift each other up over here. We like seeing our sisters win over here, okay? You can keep that humble shit to yourself. Number three, you think that body hair on women is disgusting. Now, mind you, I shave my armpits and I get waxed for me. Just because I like it, it's something that I like to do for myself. But if you want your armpit hair there, keep it there. If you want to grow a bush, you grow that fucking bush, bitch. The point is that we have a choice. 
to do whatever we want. Shave or no shave, grow it out, pull it out, shave it off. Doesn't matter. You have a choice and you need to respect my choice and I respect your choice. And no matter what your choice is, I want you to be confident and you are valuable, you are beautiful, and you are important. Men want us clean shaven so that we can very closely resemble children. So if you think that you have to do that in order to attract a man, you're kind of playing into that whole idea that they have going on. Body hair is not gross. It's there to protect us, okay? It's our friend. It's okay. So stop judging women who want to keep it where it grows, all right? Our waists have to be cinched. We can't have any cellulite. Our boobs have to be up to here. Our arms can't jiggle. Our thighs can't jiggle. Our booties can jiggle, but only at certain times. And there are so many plus size creators on this app. And it's not just men in their comments bullying and harassing them. It's women too. So if you're a woman and you're fat phobic, you're playing into this whole patriarchal idea that we have to be small, tiny, and we can only have just enough curvature to model Marilyn Monroe. No, this is not a diss on her. I think she's great. If you see a plus size woman wearing a bikini and you utter the words, you're so brave, I'm gonna need you to check yourself. Why is she brave? Bravery is doing something that you should be scared to do, right? So, wow, you in that body, you should be scared to wear that. You're brave. No, ma'am. We don't tell tiny people who are a size one that they're brave for wearing a bikini. We don't tell Victoria's Secret models that they're brave for wearing a bikini. So let's stop fucking telling plus size women that they're brave. No, they're just a woman in a bikini who's confident, who's feeling herself like anybody else can and should. The next one, almond moms. Our kids tend to mimic what we say and do. Um, not necessarily what we tell them, but what they mirror what they see us live in our day-to-day -day lives. And a lot of you moms are teaching your kids how to have eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Kids should not be worried about calorie counting and diet products and good food versus bad, bad food. You should not be calling your kid chubby. I'm gonna need you to live your life the way that you want your kids to live their life. Because I don't care how many lectures and talks you have with them, they're seeing every fucking thing you're doing, the good and the bad, and they're gonna mirror that to some extent. Every time you talk shit about yourself, you're talking shit about your child because that's gonna become their internal dialogue too. Boy moms, number six, your son is not your boyfriend. He is not your protector. He is not your provider. He is a child who is living his own path in life. And a lot of these boy moms, okay, I'm going to say this and it's going to come across as mean, but I'm going to say it. A lot of boy moms are women who are in marriages where their husbands are not active participants, their husbands don't pay attention to them, their boyfriends don't pay attention to them, or maybe they're single and just really lonely, and they put their son in the place of the man that they wish that they had. That is inappropriate and that is gross, and that's why I'm always telling women to develop their own personalities and their own lives because you also raise men who feel like the world centers around them and you become the toxic mom who encourages her son to mistreat other women. Stop that shit. You feel as if a woman is supposed to constantly be dressed to the nines all the time and her hair is supposed to be freshly done all the time and you call them frumpy and you think they've let themselves go. Uh, newsflash, it's possible for a woman to be confident and to dress more sporty and relaxed. I tend to dabble between red carpet ready and picked up from the bottom of the clothes pile at any given moment. You are not better than anyone just because you are constantly photo shoot fresh. Number eight, clicks, mean girls, aesthetic friends. If you're a mean girl, if only certain people who look a certain way can sit at your table, then you cannot fucking sit at mine. If you only need cute friends who can be Instagrammable, you're a fucking loser who peaked in high school. Everyone is welcome at my table. Everyone can sit with me. What did you think of my list?